Hey everyone, one of the questions I get from time to time is, what's the difference between an upstream key and a downstream key? And then another question I get is, what is an upstream key and what is a downstream key? And likewise, what is a key? Well, let's start by answering that one. So hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Orem, Utah called DJP. And we do live events of all sorts. And I've had this YouTube channel now where I've been talking about video production related topics for about three and a half years. And I have people ask me questions all the time about how to get started and what some of the basic concepts about some of the basic concepts and asking for some explanations. So, uh, do my best to try and explain this. This is a very much unplanned video. I just happened to be in the trailer and I thought I'd put this together. So, first of all, what what is a key? So, a key is basically any graphic or any video source that you overlay on top of one another. So the most common example you probably see of that would be a, a lower third where you see someone's name uh, placed at the bottom of the screen using a computer graphic. You might also be familiar with uh, the term green screen where that's actually a key where they're removing the background by removing anything that in the, in the video that happens to be green. And that's done with a key. So. The Blackmagic ATM switcher that I'm going to be using and demonstrating on here is able to do those, as most other switchers are. The terminology here may differ from your own switcher, but conceptually these things are fairly standard. So the, the industry, the video production industry is kind of standardized on, on this portion of the workflow. So even though the names might be a little bit different and you might go about setting these things up a little bit different from one manufacturer to the next, Conceptually, this is going to apply to pretty much every switcher that's out there. So, okay, so we've got a key to find. What is the difference between an upstream key and a downstream key? Well, before I can really define that, we need to talk about transitions. So if you look at my screen here, I'm going to do a transition between two different shots. So I've got the shot of me and the shot of my computer. And I'm doing a dissolve from one to the other. In order to do that, you've got your preview and you've got your program. A transition switches between those. And, and at a simple level, that's really what, that's the fundamental of what's happening there. However, there's actually more going on there than, than that. So if we take a look at the software here, this is the ATEM software control for controlling the switcher. This section of the software right here is used to set up your next transition. And normally, we just have background turned on. And what that really means is when I'm going to do a transition from one shot to another, it's going to transition from whatever's currently live, whatever's currently on program, to whatever's on the preview bus. So think of this background button being the preview bus. They could actually even write preview on there because that's exactly what's happening. So whatever's selected in this box is what we're going to be transitioning to when we hit our transition button. Next to that, we have buttons for key one and key two. Now, these are upstream keys. And what do we mean by upstream? Upstream essentially means that these are keys that are included as part of the transition. So when we transition from preview, whatever's on preview, to program, anything that's on an upstream key is going to be transitioned with it. The downstream key happens after that. So whatever you place on a downstream key is going to stay on screen no matter what you're doing with your transitions. I very often use downstream keys for things like logos, company logos. So uh, place a bug in the lower right corner of the screen that just stays up there for the entire program. It doesn't go on and off with changes in, in shots. So that's really the difference between an upstream key and a downstream key at a fundamental level. As far as implementation from one switcher to another, it varies. Like for example, the, this Blackmagic switcher that I'm using, the downstream key has a lot fewer capabilities than the upstream key does. The downstream key won't do what we call chroma keying, which is where you have greens, where you have green screen, where you're taking out the green to place an object in front of it, in front of a background. That can be done with an upstream key. It can't be done with a downstream key. Okay, so uh, let's actually take a, a little more of a look at this. So on, if you look at my pre the preview window in the upper left corner of the screen there, when I press this key one button it's going to show this sample graphic that I've, that I've put. And it's showing it on top of what's on the preview. So the background, the preview, has key one added on top of it. And then if I press key two, you're going to see that key two is added on top of that. And if I do a transition, those will all be included as part of that transition. Now transition back. 
Now, the other thing you can do here is you don't have to include that background as part of your transition. So we'll turn off the background button. And that means that the preview is not included as part of the transition. So if I do that transition, you'll see that it's just adding the graphic on top of what was already there. Now likewise, if we hit the background button now, do the transition, and it does actually include the background in that transition. So with that, we can create layers, and we can do some pretty cool things. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into a little more about the impl specific implementation that Blackmagic has here with the keys. But that's kind of the fundamental idea. So we've got the selection here of whatever is going to be included in the next transition. Uh, above that, we actually have some buttons to take those on and off of air without having to do a transition. So if I press this one, it's going to take key one and put that on air without having to do a transition. Likewise, key two. And I'm going to take those back off again. The one thing that's a little strange uh, here I'll put these back on screen. You notice that these two are lit. The key one and key two are lit, but they're not included in that preview window. That's just a little quirk about the way this particular switcher is, is implemented. So eff effectively, instead of meaning this is what's going to be on screen after the transition, it means we're going to change the state of that as part of the transition. So if I turn those off, uh, you always have to have at least one selected, by the way. So. In order to turn those off, you have to have background selected. So you notice here that even though key one and key two are not lit, they're actually included in that preview window. And if I do a transition, they will stay on screen. So effectively what we have here is pressing these two buttons toggles whether that layer is included as part of the transition. Now that's, that's kind of a black magic thing. You, you won't find that other manufac switcher manufacturers do that that way. So it's a little counterintuitive if you ask me but that's but that's how it works so I'll do the transition again there we go you can see that we have our background key one and key two all on screen now I'm going to actually do a downstream key here uh, I need to change the graphic so bear with me okay so I've got what I've done is I've placed a lower third in media player 2 and then you see that I have selected, see, there's upstream key. There, okay, there we go, downstream key. So fill source, this is media player two. I also you have to use media player two for the, for the, the, uh, the key. By the way, fill source, that's the foreground, and the key is basically the transparency information. So you can have graphics that are partially transparent. In this case, I'm using a file that doesn't have any transparency in it. So I'm using what we call a Luma key. I can get to more of that, more of that in a minute. But I'm using a Luma key, so everything that's black actually becomes transparent in the image. Workflow here is left to right. So you've got your, your preview and program. You've got your transition. Uh, the T-bar is part of the transition. And then you've got your downstream key here. So that's kind of a left to right flow of, of what's actually going on inside the switcher. Now this section right here is for those downstream keys. Downstream key two is actually the lower third that I set up here. So if I press, in this case, when I press the auto button, you'll see that it adds the lower third on top of that graphic. Now, actually, let me change the video source on that. There we go. So you'll see, you're seeing my graphic with the downstream key on top of it. And likewise, if we do a transition with, uh, from preview, so we've got our preview background graphic. We've got key one selected. And if I do a transition, you'll see that the background video, that key are, have transitioned on screen, but the downstream key stays on top of both, both of those. Okay, and if I transition back, so the downstream key still stays on screen. Now another thing you can actually do here is you can actually have the switcher remove the downstream key when you do a transition. And that's done with the tie button here. So if I click on tie for downstream key two, and then I do a transition, you'll see that downstream key two actually faded off a of screen. So even though the downstream key is not technically part of the transition, you can actually have it be brought on or off a of screen while you're doing a transition. That's just a convenience feature. The downstream key is not part of the transition. I need to, need to make that clear. 
A couple other buttons here that are that uh, you got on air button here. I'm gonna turn that the tie off. So I've got the on air button here that just turns it on and off without without a transition, and then the auto button slowly fades it on and off. And the duration of that fade can actually be set here in the downstream key properties. All right, with upstream and downstream keys defined, and hopefully you've got a better idea of what that's all about, let's talk about some of the different capabilities that they have. Because on this particular switcher and many others, the they can do different things. So the downstream key on this particular switcher only has the capability of doing either alpha keys or uh, Luma key. So an alpha key is where the image that you're keying actually has its own transparency information as included as part of the file or included as part of the video. A Luma key is where it determines transparency based on the, on the brightness. So white becomes fully opaque and black is transparent. And you can adjust what those levels so at what point in that range between black and white actually becomes transition as well as the width. Whether it's a hard stop between one, gray, one, level, level, one level of gray and another or whether it's more gradual. So you can actually create some transparent transparent effects sort of like I did with this graphic right here. So you can see it's partially transparent even though this is just a, a Luma key. So the downstream keys actually have the capability of doing Luma keys and, the, and alpha keys. They cannot do, on this switcher, cannot do a chroma key for example. So you can't use, you can't have a green screen that you use for a downstream key. And you wouldn't normally do that. Uh, most of the time when you're doing a chroma key, it would be something that you'd want to bring on and off as part of a transition. And that's why uh, on the Blackmagic switcher, the chroma key is only available in the upstream key. Let's take a look at some of the other differences that are here as well. So if we look at the settings for the upstream key. So we have Luma, which is again is based on intensity. That's also where you find your alpha key as well. We have chroma, which is based on color. So we can set, say for example, a green. We have pattern. We have DVE, digital video effects. Now the DVE here is basically referring to the ability to resize, rotate, and move a video source around. This would be useful for something like a picture in picture. And I've, I actually use that fairly extensively on a lot of the productions that I'm doing. This picture in picture that I'm doing right here, I'm actually doing with a, a totally separate feature. It's called the Super Source, which is specific to the Blackmagic higher end switchers. So using just an upstream key, you wouldn't be able to recreate what, I, what I'm doing here in this video. Let's take a little bit harder look at the Luma key. So look at my preview window. You can see that I've got the, some, some blue bars. Now, the reason that that's actually showing the way that it does is because the graphic that, I prov that I'm using actually does have a separate transparency layer to it. And if you look at my settings here, player one is the actual graphic, and then the player one key is that transparency information from that file. If I was using a file that did not have its own transparency information, then I would want to use player one and you can see here that the darker portions of the image are transparent and the brighter portions are actually visible. Now if I come down to the clip and gain settings here, we can adjust the level of transparency. So as I adjust that, you can see more is becoming visible. And then the gain basically controls the transition between them. So you can see partial, partial transparency versus uh, just a simple, is it visible or is it not? So you can control that with the, the gain. The combination of the two, those two controls actually interact with one another. And so you might want to tweak them a little bit in order to get a perfect key for what you're trying to do. I'm going to put them back on basically an alpha key. So I'll put these settings back to their previous. There we go. Okay, so we've got these blue bars that are that have transparent information and it's allowing the background to show through. Okay, let's talk about flying keys for a minute, because the flying keys allow you to do some simple animations for as part of your trans transitions. So uh, the flying key here, the settings are here as part of the, in this case, um, we're still on the Luma key. So scroll down to flying key, and it's an option you can turn on and off. And then it's got some properties here to set its position. So in the case of the Blackmagic switchers, they use a coordinate system that's based on 16 by 9. Um, so if I, rem if I move to position, position X16, the graphic moves over half a screen because now the center position is on the right edge of the screen. So we want it to go 
all the way off screen, we'd actually do a 32. Before I do that, though, we'll actually want to demonstrate something else. So bring it back on screen to 00, zero center, which is the center of the screen. There are also some size options here. So we can say 0 0.5, which is half, half size. I go full, back to full size 1.0. There's also a rotation parameter here. So if I rotate 180 degrees, you can see that that's rotated. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to take, see, I'm going to move it off to the right of the screen. I'm, I'll go halfway to start with, and then I'll go all the way, which is X position of 32. So my position is X32, Y0, size is 1, so full size, and rotation is 180 degrees. So effectively, it has been moved off screen and flipped 180 degrees. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to set keyframe A. So I'll click the set A button. All right, now let's reset all this. Bring it back on screen. Set the rotation back to zero. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it down past the bottom of the screen for preset B. Uh, so to move down, that's actually a negative number. So if I move negative 9, that's halfway off screen. If we go all the way off screen, do negative 18. So now that graphic is fully off screen, below. And I'm going to click Set B. So now what we've got is I've got two presets. One where the graphic is off to the screen, uh, to the right. Well, you're, there we go, the right. And then we've got one where the graphic is down below. Now if I want to animate that, I click one of these Run 2 buttons. So... We've quick clicked the run to A, and you'll see it went from below to off screen to the right. Uh, this will make a little more sense. So if I click on the full button, you'll see it rotate back into position and come on screen all at the same time. If I click on B, it'll move down, down below the, the screen. And again, so full brings it back on screen and centered at 100% size. And then we've got our other presets. Uh, it also has some other presets built in here as well. So if I click on one of these other buttons under the Run to Infinite section, like for example, this one takes it off in the upper left-hand left corner. In order to restore it, you have to click the full button again to bring it back. But there's some others here as well, I like to shrink it down the middle of the screen. Go off to the right edge. Uh, yeah, so several different options here as well. Now, the, the downside to this is these don't automatically, at least with this widget, don't automatically happen as part of the transition. So I can do the transition, and the graphic goes live, but it doesn't automatically animate. So you're going to want to have that set up before you do the transition. So for example, I'm going to move the graphic down below the bottom of the screen, do the transition. You don't see any change there. But then I'll press the full button, and there you go. See, the graphic animates on screen. Now, in this particular case, the background didn't change as part of the transition because my background and my source are the same. So let's actually do this again using the computer graphic behind. There we go. So transition, got the computer graphic, and my computer image behind the upstream key layer, uh, upstream key one on top of that. And I'll do an animation here. So click. B, there you go. So normally you'd have that off screen. If you want, if you just want to have the transition without changing the background, what do we do? We go back here to the background button and turn that off, right? So let's let's go back. Let's bring the graphic back on screen so you can still see it's still active. Then I'll I'll move it down below the screen, and then I'm gonna turn the background off. Perform the transition. You don't, don't see any change at that point. You can then press the full button to bring it on screen. So there we go. We've done a transition with a graphic using features of the software. In most situations, you're probably going to want to automate this a little bit using the macros feature. And I could do an entire separate video on the macros feature in switchers. Basically, that allows you to do little sequences of commands like this in an automated fashion. So Take the time to get to understand the macro feature in your switcher. It actually let you, allow you to do a lot of cool things that you probably wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And it, uh, it makes a lot of things easier. Things, like, uh, sequences of things that you do frequently, you just put put inside of a macro, and, and and then a single button press will actually perform that series of actions for you. All right, now let's actually let's get back to so full screen. Trans transition the background. Do the animation. There we go. Okay, so. We've got 
the flying key there. We've done a chroma key. What's well, actually moved over to DVE. So in this case, a DVE, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be taking a, a separate video source and moving it around or shrinking it down. So I'm going to choose, let's see what, let me turn off my existing key here. So there we go. All right, so choose my video source. I'm going to use, let me switch things up a bit here. So go computer, background, and then I'll put me live. There we go. And then I'm going to choose my camera as the source for the DVE. And then I'm going to say USK1 next so that it actually appears on screen. Now, I'm taking up the whole screen right now because I haven't resized or anything. But if I come down here and I change the size to, say, 0 0.4, there we go. I shrink down. And then I can change the position. So let's move it over to, say, position 10. Oh, that's a little too far. I'll go, yeah, maybe 8. There we go for the X. And then let's say 4 for the Y. So there we go. There we have a picture in picture that will happen as part of transition. So I'll do the transition. Bingo. So there's my video on top of the computer graphic. Transition back. The picture in picture comes on and off a screen. Uh, with the, with the transition because it is being it's being done with the upstream key. That's, how, that's some other thing you do here as well. You can, you can actually add a border. Uh, so let's do bevel in and out there, and then give a little bit of a width here so you can actually see it. There we go. So a very slight border on there. A little inner. There we go. A little thicker. You can see that on screen. Transition that on and off. Now what do we want to do if we want picture in picture? To, tran to transfer on without the background, we, again, turn the background off, perform the transition, the picture-in-picture -picture comes up on screen without changing the background behind it. And again, if we do the same thing again, same thing happens. Now, if turn the background on again. Now, if I do the transition, that layer behind the preview video source it gets included as part of that. Okay. All right. Um, so... I think that kind of covers at least the high-level concepts associated with the upstream and downstream key that we have available on our switchers. There's a ton of things you can do by enable by using a combination of different settings that are in there. So, for example, I read on a forum recently somebody was looking for a way to do a black and white image, and you can actually do that with a keyer on these on these switchers. So, you know, there, are lots, there are lots of little tricks that you can do on here. Uh, and some of the more recent switchers have even better capabilities. So the, mo the more recent ATEM switchers, for example, have much better chroma keyers in them than this model that I have and some of the older ones. So if you're looking to do a green screen, some of those newer models do a better job of that. And that includes the new ATEM Mini that ships next month. It actually does a better job of chroma keying than this $4,000 switcher that I've got here. So anyway, if you guys have questions about this, please don't hesitate to ask. But do do please try and keep them brief. I do have a lot going on. I don't have a ton of time to research answers, but I am happy to answer questions that I can off the top of my head. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week. This is actually the second video this week. I've been a little bit slow recently, but I've got more coming. And uh, I try to address topics that people request. So if you have something you want to learn about, please don't hesitate to ask. You know, leave me a comment in the description. And leave, leave a comment down below and uh, I'll put them on my to-do list and hopefully get address topics that are actually meaningful for people that are here viewing the channel. So anyway, thanks guys for watching and have a fantastic day.